We're ready. So I'll be talking about Toxoplasma gondii. Oh, okay. And this is a single cell eukaryotic protozo protozoa. Um, and it is only a definitive, the only definitive host is cats. But you can, it can infect uh, livestock, wildlife, birds, and humans. Um, but they're intermediate hosts. So this means that uh, cats are the only ones that can produce, that, that can have it reproduce in them and produce oocytes that can eventually pass out of the cat into the feces and infect other animals like livestock. So that's what it means by definitive host, I was yes. going to ask you. So it can live and in, 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 uh, reproduce in that animal and the other ones are kind of like carriers and they can transport yeah. it and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. The other ones are infected but they can't reproduce so once it passes it's done. Okay. Um, so this is the life cycle. Um, normally cats get it through other um, animals like mice or birds from eating them and the mice get it from water or eating cat feces and so the cats will eat the mice and the parasite will go into the small intestines in the epithelium and it will infest there and reproduce when the epithelial tissue in the small intestines sheds it'll pass out and end up in the feces from here, water can wash it into livestock feed or the ocean and affect other animals. And humans can be infected through eating livestock that are infected with the parasite or uh, being in contact with the litter. That's a, that was a good diagram. Did you make that? No. Okay. <laughs> so, um, about 10 to 20 percent of animals actually show symptoms, and the animals that do show symptoms show like disease, abortion, weak newborn, respiratory problems, and occasional nervous signs, and sometimes death, but that's on the severe cases. And human symptoms are fever, headache, muscle aches, and enlarged lymph nodes. It's much like a flu. Um, there's about 60 million people that are carriers currently that have no clue because they have no symptoms. Their immune system fights it off. Um, so now it's 60 million worldwide. Yes. Is there million. like some countries you can mention that are like more prevalent? I don't know. Okay. I, I heard that North America has a lot of problems with the livestock okay. um, being infected and then it infecting humans. It is the second leading uh, foodborne illness. Okay. So for preventions, it says keep cats indoors. This will keep them from being in contact with the mice or birds that would carry the parasite. Um, cook all meats to medium or more so that the parasites are killed in the meat that you're eating. And clean the litter box every day. The oocytes are, take a day to sporulate and become infectious. So if you remove them before they become infectious, then you reduce the risk of being infected or it's spreading. So treatments, um, normally animals are never treated. Uh, they barely show any symptoms, so you never know when they're infected anyways. And the only known vaccine is for sheep called Toxivax, and it's a live vaccine that is given once and lasts a lifetime. And the humans are often prescribed pyrimethine, Pyrimethamine, which is used to treat malaria, or sulfadiazine, which is an antibiotic. Go back to that for the slide. What? Any idea why the only vaccine that exists is for sheep? You know what I mean? Doesn't it, like? I'm not sure. I know they're looking for other vaccines, but none of them have been approved yet. Okay, so they're maybe developing them, but. <laughs> I'll let you point to people. Yeah. So it's parasite, right? Yeah. But does it like leave a virus in the host? So what it does is your immune system normally attacks it and collects them together and then it'll form a cyst in the tissue and it'll just sit there as a cyst and then like if you eat livestock. Now it's a protozoa, right? 
It's a protozoan? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. And it'll, um, when you eat the livestock, you in ingest the cysts and everything. So that's how you get it. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about the symptoms and you said only 10 to 20% of the hosts actually show the symptoms, is that just for the cats or is that for any animals? That's for all animals. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, even the intermediate hosts. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when I learned about this in a different class, um, uh, something interesting that was like people said that pregnant women shouldn't have cats around because like cleaning the litter box you're yeah. more at risk so how would cleaning the litter box put you at risk if it come if you get infected through ingestion well if <laughs> if you that's don't that's a good question it, and you're doing the right thing bringing it in from other classes that's why you know we have this kind of like these sessions if you don't clean it every day then the ooh so I guess gets infectious, becomes infectious. And then if you're cleaning it without wearing gloves or something like most people do, I mean, they'll say that they're pretty clean about it, but I'm sure most of them don't wear gloves or don't wash their hands afterwards. So you have that on your hands and then if you go to eat, mm -hmm. then you ingest it. And then it's also like, depending on where the litter box is or the cat, where the cat's going, the cat can tra travel like, carry it around on the pads of its feet throughout the house, and if it gets on your counters or anything, then it can infect your counters. Yeah, I mean, you can see what a cat could do. Scrat, and you know, they always cover over the feces, but their paw might have some protozoa on, and then they're gonna walk on you, or walk on the bed, or the counter, or jump here. So yeah, it's very highly recommended that pregnant women stay away from the litter boxes, and ideally, you probably keep the cat in some small area or some area of the house and not be exposed, but I'm not sure how many people do it that. It does say if you do know your uh, cat is infected, to isolate it from all people and animals, which is a little difficult. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> some of the preventions, like, okay, keep the cat indoor. You know, a lot of cats love to be outside. And there was another, oh, the changing the litter box daily. That's, you know, I violate that all the time. We have a farm cat. And, uh, don't look at the litter box. I'm not <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, so very interesting. Yeah, there it is. Well, the cooking of the all meat is interesting because does anybody know years ago there used swine were fed garbage a lot of times and it was on cooked. I mean, this was years ago before all these confinement operations were. What was the parasite that you could get from undercooked pork? And it actually would then live in you and make a little cyst, kind of like what you're saying. Anybody know that disease? You don't talk about it much anymore, but I bet you it's still around in undeveloped countries. Anybody know? It starts with T. Anybody? Trichinosis. So, yeah, so that's another thing that is very, I mean, it was very common for people to get trichinosis because a lot of the swine would have it. It's not an issue anymore, but you wouldn't, you know, maybe an undeveloped country might still have it. Further questions?